Okay, I think we're ready. Um, good morning, I'm Hallie Chillog. I'm a professor at the University of Charleston and it is my great pleasure to kick off our discussion and explanation today of, I think, the city of Charleston's newest mural. Um, today, uh, my role, I'm gonna talk about um, the individuals that were involved in establishing the work and the process of the mural. And uh, first off, I would like to introduce Jeff Pearson. He's the Director of Public Art for the City of Charleston. Um, the City's Communications Director, Mackenzie Mize, um, has a, a wonderful tolerance for all the crazy ideas that Dr. Kara Fisher and I bring to her to involve our students um, in projects in the city of Charleston. And I think it was first Kara's idea to say, why don't we do a public art piece with students from the University of Charleston? And then you're gonna learn about the agencies and individuals that became involved um, given her vision today. Jeff was our first contact. Um, he approached us with enthusiasm and inspired confidence and he's a wonderful new friend to me. I love projects where I get to acquire uh, new acquaintances. I've learned so much about this process from him, the technical aspects, other parts, of, other pieces of art in the city and it is my joy to um, introduce him today as kind of the catalyst for our connection with the city of Charleston and this project. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I am Jeff Pearson, the director of the Office of Public Art uh, through the city of Charleston. Um, we're responsible for the maintenance, education, and the commissioning of new public artworks in Charleston. And this project came together uh, with a few people that had some ideas. And that's how these things work, and it's so powerful. I'm standing here today because of my great-grandfather, Giuseppe Persona, who came here from Italy in 1903. He was an immigrant came under very different circumstances than what we're talking about today. And that's powerful. And another, I'm gonna let them drive by. Hi. So another, I don't usually make uh, personal remarks when I talk about public art. Um, but I do wanna say something about my 10 year old daughter that's here with me today, um, Sylvia. I watched her, um, we each had a, uh, a, a lot of people had panels we painted, and Keith will talk about that in a moment. But I want to talk about my, my daughter's panel. Um, Sylvia, you can even point it out if you want. When we were going to do this piece, we were, I was telling my daughter a little bit about what this piece means and what it's about, and she said, Daddy, I want to paint Malala uh, because she's a hero to me, and that's so powerful. Um, look at the power of this public art gives us. It gives us a collective voice, and it speaks volumes for equality, tolerance, and inclusion. And it was all done with a few cans of paint, maybe not a few cans, um, but a few cans of paint and people uh, that had power to tell something, tell their story, and we have this collective voice now uh, that is, serves as a symbol for what we're here for today. The vision, what illustrates so beautifully who we are and what we can do together. So thank you for supporting public art and the people that are here today. Thank you so much. Next, um, it is my pleasure, my joy to introduce Keith Weil. He is the muralist who developed this de design and allowed hundreds of Charlestonians, about 100 of our students at the University of Charleston, um, as well as a variety of community leaders, residents, citizens from all walks of life to complete a tile that expressed their association um, with the themes of the mural. Um, I am not a very visual person. I'm not particularly good at it. And what struck me most in working with Keith is that he believed in our students, he believed in our citizens to realize their own vision and to create the, the collective picture that is celebrated in Keith's design. Um, so many times I felt this can't possibly work. <laughs> 
but he really instilled confidence in me and in my students and told them that they did have the skills that uh, folks painting from around the city did have the skills to express themselves in this way. And so while this is a incredible um, message in and of its own right, it also helped folks realize their history in a way that celebrated personal narrative. And um, that does make sense to me. So um, join me please in welcoming and thanking Keith Wild for this framework for our city to celebrate um, our history past and our, our current realities. Thank you, Alex. When diverse talents and diverse points of view can find it within themselves to work together, unique and wonderful things can happen. And if I had one thing to say today, that would be it. I'm going to go on and say a few other things. Uh, my role in this project was to be a conduit, to listen, enable, and bring to life the vision of my collaborators. I hope the audience to this mural will be able to do the same. That is, I hope they will recognize the kind, true, and ex essential expressions contained in this mural and be able to share that insight with others. My work on this project began when professors at the University of Charleston invited me or asked me the question, is there a way that we could take our labor of love activities, our service activities, and include public art. And to that end, I believe in this process of creating a painted mosaic. That is, many individuals would make a painted tile, and as those little creative efforts came together, a larger image would be created. And it was also a method that would allow individuals to work in a COVID safe, socially distant manner. Very important. Uh, but yet the question remained, what should we create? And to that end, uh, Jeff Pearson helped connect us with other folks interested in making a mural. Uh, and it was wonderful that it was a socially relevant mural. So a conversation ensued between the University of Charleston, the City of Charleston, the ACLU, and WVIRM, and myself and others. Um, and, and they created a prompt that would inspire me and hundreds of other volunteer artists. And that was create a mural that would celebrate the immigrant traditions of West Virginia. University professors were able to help their students think about that topic, bring facts from their classroom and learning from their classroom to the topic, um, and inform their creative efforts. But also, when, especially when any student uh, was stuck, creatively blocked a little bit, the thing that we could always fall back onto that I found so helpful, and I think they did too, I asked them, tell me about your immigrant history. How was your family an immigrant to this country once upon a time? And then that was an easy unfolding for most of our participants. And I hope you'll find that this image bubbles and bristles with 192 little stories that you can dig into and just, you know, there's a million beautiful little marks up there. Um, after that was done, for those of you that are curious, I assembled the pieces and then painted on the words and images over top. Uh, the words, um, I hope you'll understand, are a string of words without punctuation. And in that way, I hope you'll, you'll stumble into them. I hope you'll be able to pick out various two and three and four word combinations and regard, almost regardless of how you grab those, they feel like related cousins to our theme. And because they are yet still a little bit different from each other, depending on how you bundle them, it might feel like a conversation about our topic. And I think a conversation is where we'd like to be rather than a concrete statement. And then finally, the figures, the images of people painted on there, uh, I tried to depict both a traditional set of immigrants to this, this state and a contemporary group of immigrants to this state and show how they are both similar in so many ways and that it is possible for them to greet each other warmly and I hope that we'll do that.
as a people today. Thank you all. It's been an honor to be involved in this project. It's a project of high ideals, inspiring partners, and I am so excited to have a piece prominently displayed in the beautiful city of Charleston, West Virginia. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Keith. Um, it's now my pleasure to introduce uh, my boss's boss's boss and um, our fearless leader at the University of Charleston, President Marty Roth. Um, just a moment, I want to tell you that in my experience at the University of Charleston, um, my partner in crime and I, Dr. Fisher, come up with a lot of crazy ideas. And never once has President Roth said, I don't think we can do that. He's asked questions about how we might do that, but he has never said no. Um, I really celebrate his commitment to service through his vision for the labor of love days at the University of Charleston. I celebrate his creativity and ingenuity in helping us vision projects. And I thank him for the opportunity to try new things with our students, with my colleagues. The University of Charleston is an innovative space for projects like this that both have academic and community value. Thank you, President Roth. Thank you very much, Hallie, and good morning, everybody. Uh, it was a real honor for the University of Charleston to be able to participate in this important project. Uh, you know, we're a unique institution. Uh, we're here in the capital city of Charleston uh, with a mission that's really distinctive for higher education. And our mission is that we're going to prepare each and every student for three things, a life of productive work, enlightened living, and community involvement. So this project was really front and center for our community involvement uh, marquee activities, which you've heard now reference a few times, which we call Labor of Love, where we have transformed Labor Day at the University of Charleston to be an initiative where our entire community rallies around community service. Last year, you could see us here in the city partnering with the, with, uh, the mayor, and we had students painting curbs yellow and picking up trash and pulling weeds in gardens and so on and so forth. With COVID-19, um, our fearless leaders in this initiative, uh, Hallie and Kara, had to reimagine how we could engage over a thousand individuals in community service activities. And we needed to do it in a way that was going to be safe for them and for the people that they were going to interact with. So we did a lot more work on campus. We had students that sent um, thank you cards to frontline healthcare workers. We had students who wrote uh, greetings to residents of long-term care facilities. They put together care packages for individuals. And students like Shelby Bayless over here had the great opportunity to work on this really important project. So we appreciate the opportunity to continue to partner with the city of Charleston and others in our um, surrounding area uh, to really make Charleston a better place to live, a better place to work, and a better place to study. This project also is very consistent with the other uh, theme of our uh, pillar of our mission, which is enlightened living. And for us, that means that we want to raise a level of awareness and understanding amongst our students, our faculty, and our staff of important contemporary social, environmental, and health issues. Last year, we rolled up our sleeves and focused um, a day of activities at the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday on diversity, equity, and inclusion. And this year, we're planning on doubling up by spending the entire holiday weekend on issues around healthy bodies, healthy minds, and healthy society. And I think this project here today is a great launching point for our Healthy uh, Societies Initiative. So thank you again, very um, everyone, very much for allowing the University of Charleston to participate in this initiative. And uh, we look forward to more great projects in the future. Thank you. Next, um, I hope that you'll join me also in welcoming Mayor Amy Goodwin, um, who was our partner in this project 
She celebrates progressive causes. And as you can see in our city, the first time actually Keith visited, he said, boy, this is a city, I'm paraphrasing, that has a commitment to public art. And so we um, are able to ex express ourselves here um, in a way that is unique and visible as Charlestonians under your leadership. Further, I would like to remark that Mayor Goodwin has made a commitment too to diversity in our community, of celebrating diversity as a strength. And that is realized in this mural thanks to Keith Design and our community partners and their vision in their tiles. So thank you so much, Mayor Goodwin. so much. I could listen to you talk all day. She's such an eloquent speaker. Mr. President, you have a gem in so many, as we do all throughout the city of Charleston. You know, being mayor, you get to participate in a lot of things. You get to be a little part, always in a larger effort. Um, I am no Sylvia Pearson, I promise you, although she is my art instructor, not her dad. I played a part in this and it felt so good. It felt so good to be a part of this. And I thank everyone, 192, 192 folks who did this. But what's more important than even just those 192 is how we feel about each other in the city of Charleston. My square represents what I do believe we do well in the city of Charleston. We bring people together. And when you bring people together, we have such force and we're be, we will be able to rise. So together we rise, Sue, was my square. Because I truly believe that. I do believe in progressive values here in the city of Charleston. That's who we are. We are one. I thank the ACLU for coming out and really taking leadership on this project, not only just the University of Charleston, uh, but the Interfaith Refuse uh, Ministry. Thank you, Sue. The Islamic Association, thank you so much. There's so many things that these groups do. The press shows up every now and then, and we thank you when we have big events, but please make no mistake, these organizations and institutions work every hour of every day bringing people together creating good policy and great relationships to make sure that everyone in the city knows that in Charleston, Billy, y'all means all, and we mean it, and we mean it. Thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of this project. Um, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say this. Keith um, had the opportunity to meet the artist before I came up here. And, he said to me the thing that I think we have to remember here and what our passion is in the city of Charleston. We have a public art director and we participate in public art projects because art inspires. Art inspires and it gives us hope and reason. So thanks to Jeff Pearson for always being there. You're an amazing, amazing ambassador for art in the city of Charleston. Thank you to the artist for creating what I know will be a stopping point and a visiting point for so many and with the message we want everyone to hear and see about our beautiful capital city. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much, Madam Mayor. Y'all does mean all. Um, in this project, uh, I had the great pleasure to meet Jackie Lozano, who is the Immigrants' Rights Campaign co Coordinator at the ACLU. Um, I uh, was able to converse with her. She came to my house, to my yard, to paint a tile. Um, I learned about her story as an immigrant activist and as a dreamer. And rather than step on her tape, I'm going to let her, let my new friend Jackie tell you her own story. Hello everyone. Um, I'd like to start off by thanking everyone for being here today. Uh, my name is Jackie Lozano and I am the Immigrants' Rights Campaign Coordinator for the ACLU of West Virginia. Um, as we look around us, change is happening all over. And it's an exciting time to celebrate immigrants. 
They are our neighbors, our friends, and our loved ones. We have come together in our community today to present this beautiful mural. It brings me such happiness, sorry, my uh, Spanish comes out whenever I'm nervous. <laughs> it brings me such happiness to feel included and welcomed into the community. For those of you that may not know, um, I am an undocumented immigrant protected under the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals policy established by the Obama administration back in 2012. I was brought to the U.S. in hopes of a full life and a better future. I was only two years old. I grew up in a nation full of hope and dreams, and I never knew hunger or famine. When I was sick, I was able to receive care. I never knew violence. But, I, but what I did get to know was fear. When I was 15 years old, I found out what being undocumented really was. I couldn't apply for financial aid to go to college. I couldn't participate in driver's ed to get a driving permit. I couldn't go on mission trips or my senior trip because I couldn't risk not being able to come back to my family. Even though this sounds like small things, to me at 15 were really huge. But now as an adult with a son of my own, that fear has grown into bigger things. I grew up with fear that I would come home to an empty house, that my mother would be gone. Now my fear is not making it home to my son. Even though I am currently protected from deportation by DACA, as of now, many times during the Trump administration, my life has been turned upside down. I cannot imagine being separated from my child without getting upset, but this is my reality and people like me depend on our officials to keep our families together. We are excited with what is happening on a national level for immigrants. There is renewed hope and security in our hearts. Today is a prime example as what we can achieve when we come together in love and solidarity. When we welcome one another, no matter where we come from, who we believe in, or who we choose to love, I would like to thank the city of Charleston for acknowledging our immigrants and for allowing us to feel welcomed in the city. I would like to thank the University of Charleston for working on this mural, for choosing the ACLU of West Virginia and the West Virginia Interfaith Refugees Ministry as partners. And thank you WBIRM for all the work as partners and thank you all for being here today. We are excited to present this mural today and thank you so much for coming. Jackie. Um, as I was going down the list of names today, I realized I've actually known Dr. Ibtisam Barazi the longest. <laughs> and um, I met her actually on another University of Charleston project. Um, I had a Mellon Fellowship and we were doing some studies around immigration with the HBCU in New Orleans. And I, I cold called you. Right, I cold called you as I'm kind of known to do. And I said, um, please, would you consider, I've seen some of the work you're doing, would you consider come and, coming to campus and hosting an evening and perhaps having dinner with us? And before I could get the words out of my mouth, Ibtisam acted as if I um, had done her a favor. And I have really tried to emulate that in my own um, social justice work uh, because Ibtisam, you are a warrior, a warrior. Um, she is a challenge for my most energetic students. We are all running to keep up with your advocacy. Um, she is a feminist. She is a women's rights activist. She is an immigrant activist. We first bonded on, you know, in our shared vision to protect people um, that were suffering, that had been displaced in the humanitarian crisis. Um, but we have aligned ourselves on so many other issues as mothers. I mean, so many things. And I always learn from you. And I'm, it is my joy, my pleasure, my honor to introduce you, Ipta Samparazi.
Thank you, Holly, so much. I'm not sure if I deserve all that <laughs> accolade. Uh, thank you all for coming. I'm going to start by saying, greeting you in my Islamic way. Assalamu alaikum all. Peace and blessing be upon you. And Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of the God, the merciful, the compassionate. I stand before you today at the dedication of this nothing short of miraculous collaboration effort of an amazing community, all of you, uh, representing the city of Charleston and Mayor Goodwin, Academia, Dr. Roth, Civil and Human Rights Organization, ACLU West Virginia, and West Virginia Interfaith Refugee Ministry, which we organized in 2015 because of the plight of the refugees. And we have a great group of humanitarian working with us at, in the West Virginia Interfaith Refugee Ministry, which is a nonprofit organization, to help with the plight of the refugees who have been displaced. Um, working together for the good of the whole community, all of us combined. This tells the story that working together for the betterment of everyone, not only it results in a miracle work as you see here, but it shows what a standing united to welcome the strangers, me, Jackie, and almost all of us immigrants, really, truly means. As I told Keith, when I first saw his drawing of the immigrant story in West Virginia that dates back over 80, 90 years, being represented, especially as a Muslim woman who wears her hijab, proudly it truly touched my heart and it actually brought tears to my eyes that he would even think of representing the muslim women in their hijab right here being acknowledged for who we are is not only empowering but for all of us who look different it makes us feel welcome to me and to all the members of my community who I shared this mural with, everyone who t saw it was touched by it. Not only by its magnificent work of art, but for the love, the goodness, and the light that it represents. As I paint, as Keith asked me to paint my tile, the only thing that came to my mind when I looked all of the tiles laid out on the floor was one word, subhanallah. And this is an Arabic Islamic word. We Muslim, every time we see a beautiful creation of God, we say subhanallah. And I couldn't think of anything because this creation is magnificent and the community coming together in its effort is magnificent, is magnificent. So millions subhanallah because it, it's a wondrous creation of a beauty of people coming together of different interests and background working cooperatively to show love over fear and hate unity over division acceptance over rejection and most importantly not tolerating only but celebrating the stranger the immigrant in our city of Charleston and our beautiful state, the state of West Virginia. I thank you all so much. I'm very humbled by all of you. I thank you, President Roth, and most importantly, our warrior Haley, Dr. Haley Dunlop, Jackie Lozano, Joseph Cohen, Billy Wolf, and our amazing, amazing mayor who made us all feel welcome in the city of Charleston as immigrant, as Muslim, as a community. I'm grateful to all of you. And Keith, Keith, would you come here a second? Mm -hmm. I'm most grateful to you, Keith, for your vision, for creative work, and for creating the truth to power. And I want to... As you created this mosaic uh, mural, I want to present you with a piece of mosaic, piece of art, handmade in the oldest city in the world, Damascus, Syria, to say thank you to you because you are really wonderful.
thank you all so much. Assalamu alaikum. Peace and blessing to all of you. And thank you to you all for coming. Uh, we did this together. Uh, that's a wonderful thing for me to be able to share. Thank you again so much, WVIRM, ACLU, City of Charleston, University of Charleston. Um, I think we'd all like to enjoy the mural uh, for a few more minutes, uh, gather around, celebrate it, celebrate one another. Uh, thank you so much.